panel discussion. The topic at hand is rules of engagement between PR and the brands managing each other's expectations. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Ms. Gehna Sani, Director, Communications, India and Europe, Pitney Bowes. Please welcome Ms. Lavina Gujral, COO, Kenda Communication. Welcome, Ms. Gujral. Please give it up for Ms. Tehseen Zaidi, Head Communications, Syngenta. And please put your hands together for our session chair, Ms. Ruchika Jha from Exchange for Media. Very good afternoon to everybody present here. Uh, welcome all the panelists. Uh, so today our topic is rules of engagement between PR agencies and the brands and how they manage each other's expectations. So without any delay, I would like to start. And my first question is that what are some of the founding parameters of the relationship between agencies and the brands? Very basic question. Ms. Zaidi, I would like to start with you. Am I audible? Hello, everybody. I'm Tehseen. And uh, to start with, I'll say that, you know, I have worked on to, I started my career with Trinch, Times of India, then I moved on to agencies. I worked with some of the leading agencies like Corporate Voice, Weber, Shanvik, then Integral P PR. Then I moved to in electronic media. I worked with NETV for over a decade. And now I'm working <laughs> with an MNC in the Corporate Communications Department. So I have seen all sides of it. So I, I totally understand where the gaps are where you know we can work in more close coordination so to summarize it having seen all sides first of foremost i will say there should be a mutual respect and uh, the second thing will be i will say you know communication so the communication should be very clear and crisp i have observed sometimes that the briefing and the expectations of what you know our client wants and what the agency has to deliver doesn't match so, and, and the third thing and the foremost thing is, you know, understanding the news points, understanding the news points. And, you know, I always expect with all the PR agencies that who we work with that, you know, a journalist for them, it's a story, it's a byline. So they can't do everything for you and they can't write. Of course they write. So whatever you mail or you share with them should be relevant to them. The content should be rich that they are able to use it properly. It should not be any content you're sharing and expecting to publish. And, and one more very important part I like to say that, you know, agencies and the brand should, you know, all, like agency should work as a partner, not just like a project or just a client. So when they work like just a client or, you know, just one project, then it's not close to your heart. So I, I always want to have a long-term association with whoever agency I work with so that they feel very close to the brand when that closeness is there and belonging is there. And belonging is always there when, you know, you work very closely. We inform, you inform all them about all the, you know, developments. You keep them in the loop and you, you, you know, you, you are meeting face to face also. These days, virtually, I know the trend is there that everyone wants to have virtual meetings. I, I still don't believe in having virtual meetings. What I feel is that face-to-face -face meetings are very important. That will give you that human touch. The body language will be able to tell you, you know, the other person's expectations apart from what you do on Zoom. And also, you know, when you meet, you understand much more than, you know, meeting virtually. So I think these, these are very important points which one should always consider and... I mean, as always, I say that important news points are very important. You give it to them and it will be published. So that news sense should always be there. So with that, I'd like to hand it over to my other lovely panelist who's waiting. Ms. Kujral. Yeah, thank you, Ruchika. Thanks, Tessin. Um I would also like to iterate the fact that uh, a mutually beneficial relationship is based on respect, number one, that is non-negotiable. Uh, in what do we mean by respect? Respect does not just mean that, you know, uh, we've entered into a contract and hence, you know, uh, 
we need to recognize what the brand stands for for an agency for a pr company it's important to understand what the brand is wanting to achieve through the relationship and for the brand it is important to understand that the agency are the experts and hence due credit should be given to their advisement to their consultancy and then only then can the engagement be uh, fruitful uh, the other thing that i believe is when you enter into uh, uh, if you want the uh, relationship be relationship to be successful when you're entering into it be very clear about uh, what the client expects and what you can deliver. Have complete clarity and work along those lines. Don't project yourself to be, uh, you know, promising something and then delivering something else. That does uh, no one any benefit, certainly not the brand and certainly not to the reputation of the agency itself. Um, yeah, that's what uh, basically I'd like to say. Those, I think, are fundamental. Uh, you know, if your ground is secure, then the relationship will last long. Ms. Sony, what are your parameters? Yeah, so I think uh, Tahseen and Ravina have covered most of the points. Uh, just to add to what they've already said, I think uh, authenticity and rootedness in the organization's values is also very important. Uh, at its best, PR humanizes the brand. It helps bring the story of the brand to audiences. It tells you about the company, the products, its people. And in order to do that, all the things that they've talked about, you know, trust, transparency, and teamwork are most important. So those are the three, and mutual respect, of course. So those are the three that are parameters that I think are most important for a healthy and long partnership with a PR agency and a brand. Thank you, Ms. Sony. So uh, my next question is that brands, agencies, and media, these three are interrelated. So how have they how have their dynamics changed over the time? Ms. Devi? Uh, I will see, you know, for last three, four years, the trend has changed. It, it, was, it was the same, but, you know, now I think it has changed more. Now what happens is the journalists covering that particular beat, if the PR agency will mail them, they will just take it that the agency is just mailing it and they are doing follow-up. They will send the same mail ten times. But when the <laughs> it goes from the corporate communications person, then they take it lightly. So somewhere, you know, we have also to support our agency and take it in mind that if I am sending, okay, fine, they will take care of it. But, but again, with that trend, sometimes it gets into a situation that, you know, I, I can't send everything from my side thinking that, you know, it's not a serious job. So we, and agent, again, an agency and uh, the client has to work in a very close coordination. Okay, which one you are going to pitch and which I am going to pitch. So that's how I follow. When I know that it's really important, it will not be covered by the agency. Then I say, okay, fine, I am speaking to this person. You speak and we are sending. So, and, 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 and for that also, for that trend also, having a new sense is very important. And I always stress on that. However good you are friend with the journalist or the editor or the founding editor, whoever you know, they want some value for themselves. They will not take your content because you are asking them. They will take your content when you are adding value to it. You are giving them that thing which is something unique, special, or in our language we call it exclusive. So, so that is where it is that we have to work in very close coordination, the agency and of course the corporate whichever it is, to see what, what, what will be making news, who will be the target media, and then who we, we mutually decide who will be approaching. So somehow it's, again, that you, know, you should understand each other, talk to each other, plan, strategize, and give that important newsy point that is relevant. Ms. Kuchral, from an agency's perspective, how have you seen the changes? <coughs> sure. <coughs> Things have definitely changed more so over the last... Uh, two, two and a half years, you know, pre-COVID media, pre-COVID uh, approach to PR versus what it is now is radically different. Uh, I think uh, it is, as agencies, it is our job to be at the, you know, at uh, to stay on top of how things are changing and to guide our clients accordingly. Uh, so, you know, uh, for example, I'd like to share this one thing, you know, uh, one of our clients once told us long time back, why, did, why can't the media just print what we give them? It doesn't work like that, you know, and uh, there has to be mutual 
respect. There has to be a mutual give and take. It has to be a win-win for everyone. Content, as Tessie just mentioned, is king, absolute king. Uh, exclusive content works fabulously well. Uh, do not uh, promise five uh, publications exclusives, you know, because that is no longer an exclusive, really. Uh, so things like that, and you know, we've seen that uh, even clients have. Uh, I work in the B two B tech space. That is where most of our clients come from, and we've seen that uh, companies have also realized, brands have also realized, uh, you know, that chasing print doesn't really carry much weightage today. Uh, today's print is, you know, tomorrow's packaging material, as they say. Uh, digital is what lives on. So chase that, it's amplifiable, it's replicable, it stays on, it creates, uh, you know, your footprint on multiple platforms. So get, uh, change with the times, change with the uh, changing scenario of, of, uh, of the day, and, uh, you know, it just needs to be a partnership between all three. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so I think you guys have again covered most of the key points um, and I agree with them because brands have moved to a more social first approach now. We do want to be going first to LinkedIn and Twitter to be talking about uh, important news that is happening. Uh, brands are chasing uh, print and uh, traditional forms of communication lesser. So the medium of communication has changed, the way people are consuming content has changed. What has remained the same and will continue to remain the same is storytelling. If a brand is able to transcend and tell a relatable story, that is what people are looking for, something that moves them, something that makes the brand uh, relatable and that is where you know PR agencies come in and they can guide you and we rely deeply on our agency to help us navigate the new world of podcasts and uh, more technology related content. So I absolutely agree. It is about being exclusive. It is about being newsworthy and it is about embracing the first social media first age. Thank you, Ms. Soni. So um, as we're running out of time, the next question is final and it's kind of a lengthy one. So if you, if you want me to repeat the question, I will happily do it. So. The question is sometimes the budget allocated for a particular campaign do not match the scale of the vision that we were supposed to do. So how are these issues addressed? Ms. Zeki. So these are issues which always keep popping up every, <laughs> every now and then. So what I do and what I feel everyone should do is, you know, on a mutual, mutual consent, we should keep a you know little extra budget for that campaign because when you start the campaign, you have many things in mind. You do include it also, but then as the campaign goes on and you start promoting it, and sometimes you know it starts trending, then you feel okay, it's trending now. We need more. We need to do more, and then we have to you know see. And the I mean, of course, if it's a brand and an agency working together, then the agency will say that okay, now we are running short of funds. What to do? So in that case, uh, of course, we should always keep an extra budget, evaluate what is we are getting in return, and of course, uh, seeing the company's budget and what we are doing, evaluate it very well, analyze it. But uh, sitting at a position with a brand, you should always realize that the agency puts in their heart and soul to make your campaign work and be successful and they are your equal partners so when they come back to you that there's a budget constraint try to support as much as you can and of course you know there's a lot of internal back and forth which always happens so we should i mean we should always be prepared that we have some extra budget which we can give later on if it's required depending upon what kind of publicity and where the campaign is going so that is what all i like to say Thank you, Ms. Eddie. So, Ms. Gujral, is there a certain kind of standard according to which the success of a campaign is measured? Definitely. The uh, number one standard is, you know, that initial benchmark that you uh, have set along with uh, your client, you know, what it is that you are chasing, what it is that you are looking to achieve, whether in a six-month horizon or a one-month horizon or a three-year horizon, whatever it is, and to consistently go back to the drawing board and draw and measure up whether or not you are inching towards that standard, towards that goal, definitely. Uh, it could be in various formats. We know that. It could be numbers of deliverables. It could be share of voice. It could be, you know, uh, uh, 
whether it contributes to, your, to the brand's bottom line or it uh, helps in generating more leads. Whatever it is that you benchmark yourself against, uh, I think agencies need to stand tall and to be uh, ready to uh, stay ready to be judged according to that parameter, according to that benchmark that they agreed to when they were getting into the contract. Uh, I think the idea is that if you uh, stay true to that, you will, cha you will build relationships rather than chasing contracts. And that should be the aim of any fruitful relationship between a client and an agency. And that's the only way that you, know, you can have a nurturing relationship which will last long. Thank you, Ms. Gujral. Ms. Soni, how do you address this issue and how do you measure the success of a campaign? Right, thank you, Ritika. Uh, I think, you know, what we've already talked about is very similar. What we need to do is obviously right at the beginning when you start planning a project, budget allocation and discussions about that uh, should be done very clearly. Uh, it is up to the brand to listen to what the agency is telling you. You can't be shoving your numbers or your point of view on one side, but at the same time, you have to have that reciprocal relationship of trust that we talked about earlier to be able to hear them and adapt the plan accordingly. Going back to the driving board, absolutely. If it is a six month campaign, having regular catch ups to ensure that the campaign is running as per plan, any e iterations that need to be done are done and it is tweaked accordingly. Uh, that is important and uh, you know, once the campaign is done, learning from it, it's very important to do that. We constantly do that after we end a campaign to see what went well, what could be done better and how to include that in the next campaign. So th that is the first part of the question about budgets. In terms of measurement of success, that is a tricky one. And as one of the earlier panelists talked about, uh, education is very important, not just you know, between the PR agency and the brand, but also upwards, you know, informing senior leaders who we report to, let's say the MDs or the CEOs, letting them know why PR is important, educating them a little bit so that when you go back on getting more budgets or why spend should be done, there's a clear case that is made for it. So I think those are the two um, answers to your question. Thank you, Ms. Soni. Uh, we have, we still have three minutes to go. So just one last question. Two points on how crucial is crisis management in this engagement between PR agencies and brands. Ms. Zeti. It is the most crucial part, I'll say, and to I, I like to summarize it in one line. Always in any crisis or any, any situation, just put your foot in each other's shoe and know where that person is. I, I'll give you an example. While I was working with an agency, I had a very difficult client to handle. They will start calling me from 7 a.m. in the morning. So I'll be like, why are they calling me 7 a.m. in the morning and starting? And why every day starts with a crisis? OK, this has had to happened in South Korea. This has happened here. And I will be every day you know, at night sleeping with a mindset that tomorrow morning, OK, 7 a.m., I'm getting a mail and then stinkers and all that. So, so that was my side of the story. Now, now telling when I'm sitting here and my, our head office is in Basel and most of my communications happens with the APAC region, which is Singapore. Singapore starts working early. So I start getting mails from seven in the morning with requirements, we want this, we want that. So, and, and, and for that, if I have an agency, I'll need their support. So I start sending them, I mean, I, I, I try to be very decent, but I can't stop myself by 8.30, I start sending them, okay, this is what I require. So now I understand what happens. And coming back to my point, so when I was handling that client as an agency, they asked me to come and sit at their office for 15 days. So I used to re run and reach office by 9.30, 9.40. When, when I'll reach, I will say that, you know, that the person I was reporting to will have some 1,000 or 1,500 mails unanswered and her two phones ringing here and there and she in a very messy situation. So for one week, I was a little reluctant. My body language was showing that. But after a week, I realized what situation she is into and she was not calling me as much as I was thinking considering the work and the time gap between, you know, the uh, countries you are reporting to. So that's why I said that it is very important that you know, you know how to you know back each other up, how to compliment, and also with empathy, with respect. Coming back to crisis management, yes, it is. I mean, with any brand you work, every time there is a crisis, so you have to analyze, evaluate, and see. There are times when I ask my agency purposely that I am not going to mail anything. 
you are the one who's going to come in front. So I take the back seat, I do the back end work, they, they be the face and they work and it really works. There are crises when I tell them, don't answer anyone's phone, ask them to call me and I'll handle this. You guys just mail what I have sent and it will be taken care of. So the role keeps reversing. So according to the crisis, we have to analyze who's taking the front seat, who's taking the back seat. And of course, you know, when you are there and a brand is there and agency is there, then you have to make sure that close coordination is there. So everything come back to from where we started, mutual respect, working close coordination, more of physical meetings rather than virtual meetings and respecting each other's times and each other's, you know, uh, company's objective, each other's objectives, and how we can work in a best conducive environment. So with this, I'd like to end this. Thank you so much, Ms. Eddie. Just one point from you, Ms. Gujral. Um, I'll just uh, keep it short. We work with Zoom. We've been working with them since 2020, since the pandemic hit. And if you have seen Zoom's journey in India, you know what a big, huge crisis it came into. And uh, for whatever reason, the, it was a year-long crisis campaign for us, uh, requiring us to be present as much as uh, up to 16, 17 hours a day because of, uh, you know, their uh, HQ being in the US and, you know, here the Indian government going after supposed Chinese companies and for what reason Zoom got lumped with those, we will never know the truth about it. But uh, even even today, I mean, uh, uh, we feel we feel proud the way we were able to support the client and uh, the client of course of acknowledges us uh, you know uh, w the work that we did in the first year it was very hard it was nerve-wracking and add to that the pandemic stress that we all had um, but yes if you cannot stand next to your brand shoulder to shoulder with the brand at a time of crisis you really have no business being partners being in our contract it's as simple as that you know uh, easy times are easy for everyone it's in the difficult times that you really see the metal of an agency. And I think that uh, that is when an agency really gets tested and should be able to stand the test of time. Thank you, Ms. Kushal. Ms. Soni, your concluding remarks. Yeah, thank you. I'll uh, keep it short now that the bell has gone off. Uh, I read a recent study that said 69% of leaders over the last five years have faced at least one crisis. I think it's highly underrated. We've all faced many more crises, especially the last couple of years. So we have heavily relied on our agency. It is about mutual respect and uh, it's the line that I live by. Uh, in times of crisis, an agency can help you prevent bad from getting worse because it's already out there and they're there to help you firefight and uh, you know, be, be the front line. And uh, hopefully this you know, partnership will continue and help you, you know, help the prevent the crisis from getting worse. So um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you, Ms. Soni. Thank you all for your valuable time here. Thank you so much. Can I please request the panelists to kindly come up front for a group picture? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Astha Mishra, Senior Executive Events Exchange for Media, to present a small token of appreciation to our panelists. And a big shout out to the luck. Any luck? None as of now. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much.